Hello everybody, hope everyone is having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be considering some of the spiritual gems for the week of December 4 to 10, 2023. And for this week's Bible reading, we have some very encouraging and instructive lessons for this week's Bible reading. Job 22 to 24, three chapters. And now, let's jump right in. The first one comes from Job 23.13. Let's take a look of this scripture. It says, When he is determined, who can resist him? When he wants to do something, he does it. So the question, how can Jehovah's example help us to reach spiritual goals? And the thing is, he... When he wants to do something, he does it. For our goals to become a reality, we must have a strong desire to achieve them. Even while the earth was formless and waste, Jehovah could foresee the end result, a beautiful jewel in space, beautiful garden, bringing him glory and honor. Similarly, if we could visualize the result we are reaching our goals, that's the key. What we set out to do can be cultivated by meditating on the results and benefits of achieving the goal. So, visualize our goals, put them in writing, in paper, review them, and strive to achieve them with Jehovah's help. So, that's it for the first one. Now let's move on to the second one. What spiritual gems from this week's Bible reading would you like to share regarding Jehovah, the field ministry, or something else? Number one, and I want to say, friends, I'll, I'll be reading partially the scripture and then the comment in the screen. So, just... This quick observation and now Job 22, 1 to 3 says, Eliphaz, can a man be used, be of use to God, and anyone with insight be of benefit to him? Does the Almighty care that you are righteous, or does he gain anything because you follow the course of integrity? So this teaches us how important it's to be careful of diabolical liars around us. For example, Eliphaz is saying that God doesn't care about us, and he doesn't care if we are faithful or not. If this were true, God wouldn't have sent his beloved son to save us from sin and death. And of course, there are many other scriptures to revoke this diabolical lie. Number two, Job 22, 2, it says, Can a man be of use to God? Can anyone inside be of benefit to him? So, sometimes advancing age and health problems put limitation on us. The share we have in kingdom service may seem quite small in comparison with what we did when we were younger, healthier, and stronger. How important is to recognize that Satan and his demons want us to feel that what we do is not good enough for God. We must resist such thinking. Number three. The same scripture. Teach us that some people today are plagued with negative feelings about themselves. Such factors as family upbringing, exposure to pressures of life, or being victims of racial or ethnic hatred may have contributed to this. But Satan and his demons also take delight in crushing a person if they can influence an individual 
to feel that nothing he does is good enough for the Almighty God, is more vulnerable to despondency. In time, such a person could drift away, even draw away from the living God. Number 4. Job 22, 23. This scripture says about if you return the Almighty, you will be restored if you remove unrighteousness from your tent. So, Jehovah considers acts of loyal love expressed toward his servants as being rendered to him personally. The one showing favor to the lowly is lending to Jehovah, and he'll repay him for what he does, says Proverbs 19.17. Jehovah is taking note of every act of kindness performed in behalf of lowly ones. The creator of the universe considers himself to be indebted to mere humans who perform deeds of mercy and that he views such giving as loans that he repays with favor and blessings. Number 5. Job 22, 7 and 9 says, let's take a look of this scripture. You don't give the tired one a drink of water, and you hold back food from the hungry. 9. But you send away widows empty-handed, and you crush the arms of fatherless children. So these verses can help us examine ourselves in terms of how we see, how we view material things. For example, we could ask ourselves, the following questions. Is it difficult for me to be generous? Am I a stingy person? No doubt our response will reveal the kind of person we really are. Number 6. Job 22, 21. It says, Get to know him and you will be at peace. Then good things will come your way. So this teaches us how important it is to study the Bible and practice what we learn. The words of Eliphaz, dog spoken under a misunderstanding of Job's case and misdirected toward Job, were good in themselves. This 20th century world, or the current world, fails to recognize that men cannot have peace among themselves and enjoy prosperity until first they get acquainted with God and become familiar with his will and come into peaceful relationship with him in his way. Number 7. Job 22.22 22 says, Accept the law from his mouth and keep his sayings in your heart. This reminds us that many people have the Bible installed on their electronic devices, electronic devices, others in their phone, others in their bookshelf, others under their arm every Sunday they went to they go to church, others in their minds like an atheist person. But the thing is few people have the Bible in their hearts. And that should be our goal, not just in our phone, in our bookshelf, in our arm, in our bag, or in our hearts. Okay, number eight, Job 23, 3 to 5, these verses say, If only I knew where to find God. I'll go to his place of dwelling. I would present my case before him, and I fill my mouth with arguments. I could learn how he could answer me and take note of what he says to me. So these scriptures, these verses can help us to have a good conversation with a reasonable person. There are some people who have been very affected by seeing 
all the suffering that exists in the world and have felt the same as Job. The same questions like we read in these verses. At the end, Job got the answer and he understood that things are not as human beings conceive. So, we can use this story, these scriptures, to share a good message, the truth, with these people, reasonable people. Number 9. Job 24, 3, 4 says, They drive away the donkey or fatherless children, and says the widow's bowl as a security for a loan. They force the poor off the road, the helpless of the earth must hide from them. So this reminds us the words of James 1.27, True religion seeks ways to help widows and orphans, fatherless. Instead of taking advantage of them, like we read in the scripture, and there is no doubt, Jehovah is pleased with our support in preaching meetings, but we don't forget every time we help a person, someone in need, like a widow or an orphan. Number 10. Job 24.15 reminds us that Jehovah is watching us. Let's take a look at this scripture. And it says, the eye of the adulterer waits for twilight, saying, no one will see me, and he covers his face. So, that's a lie. Always is someone watching us. Jehovah is watching us 24-7. Although others are not watching us, God is always aware of our actions, good or bad. Actions he's aware of everything. This fact helped Joseph not to fall into the trap of adultery with Potiphar's wife. And this can encourage us to reject temptations like that. So friends, that's it. Very encouraging spiritual gems we find in this week's Bible reading. So thanks for watching, thanks for your patience with my English, and if you like this video, please consider subscribe to our channel and share this video, and hope to see you next time. Be safe, and see y'all.